about 12 weeks into the semester here and I have two students, one in challenge one and one in challenge two. And high school students, as you know, need to have a transcript. So I have been doing some record keeping and I want to show you this super simple. This is the easiest way I have found to keep records throughout the year um, because I do not have the processing space to set down each week and type into a transcript and update all of that. Um, but also if you have great record keeping tips for your students, um, your high school students, put them in the comments so we can see this as a resource and people can um, go through and find ideas that might work better for them um, and I might get inspired as well and hopefully learn something new. So please comment below and please just excuse the mess behind me. My office has been turned into a playroom for a little bit. So I've got all piano moved out of the way. We've got all these doll houses that the girls are playing with. You can see our helicopter pad. Yes, it's very exciting. Um, so please excuse the mess. We're just, I'm just gonna go with it today because that's what homeschooling is all about. Just going with the flow. And if we haven't met before, hi, I'm Erica Lynn, homeschool mom. And it is my goal to help homeschooling become easy for you too. So I'm taking all the tips and tricks that I have learned over the last 12 years of homeschooling and putting them into these videos. Videos. So please like and subscribe to my channel for more homeschooling tips and ring the bell so you can see when I put out a new video. Thanks for your support. So I have here our classical conversations guide. Okay. Now, if you don't use classical conversations, I'm sure your curriculum has some sort of guide too that walks you through week by week what your student needs to be accomplishing according to each subject or as CC likes to call them each strand. Um, so what I'm going to show you real quick, what I do um, in classical conversations, we have six strands and what I have been doing is coming in here on the side where there is some blank space and just recording the grade for all the work that they're doing that week. So um, for math, we use, um, we're actually not using Saxon, we use Shoreman Math and they have an online um, in, uh, answer grading system. And so all I have to do is pop onto her um, Shorman Math site and see what the grade total for the week is and they calculate their own percentage. And so I just write that percentage right there and it helps me, gives me accountability that I know she did her math work for this week and it gives her the accountability of here's what you scored and, um, and helps her to be aware of where her grade is. And then we have Latin. I'm going to make a separate video. Um, so as soon as I get that done, I'm going to post that right here about how I'm grading Latin because um, what we found with Latin was we tend to skip the problems that we know how to do and only work out the problems that we are struggling with. And that way it keeps Latin time shorter, but that usually gives us a very bad grade. <laughs> so um, watch that video if you want to know how I have fixed that for grading Latin. But what I will do is I will go through and she gets a certain number of points for each problem that she does. And so I write that percentage total. Um, I'm going to write like, hey, you did um, 47 problems and that wouldn't be full problems, but you get there's a possibility of earning 47 points and you got um, 39 out of the 47. So I'd write it like that, 39 out of the 47. And then I'd probably go ahead and type that into my calculator and say like, okay, that's an 81%. Now I didn't type that in, so my math is probably wrong on that. Um, but I'm gonna do the point total and the percentage. Um, with math, I'm just gonna write in the percentage like, okay, you're at 93% according to the math website, okay? And then that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip over, um, research. Research. So for research, the only thing that Apologia has us really keeping track of is their experiment. So they get 30 points for each experiment if they do that correctly. Um, and so that they do in class. Um, and they have their own record keeping sheet. So I do like to keep record on there as well. And then every other week they take a test. Technically, they don't get a score for the on their own questions and they don't get a score for their study guide. It's just the experiments and the test, which my kids actually like that because that way they don't have to worry about getting all the right answers on the on your own questions. They can um, put in what they think and they're not penalized for still being in that learning phase and then we can go over those together um, but it doesn't affect their grade very much so they took their test and um, let's say they got an 87% on their test that week. Now the next, and then 30 points for their experiment. The next week they may not have a test score so maybe they only get 30 points for their experiment and that's it. 
Um, so next is reasoning. This one's a super easy one to grade because you have um, worksheet problems you do out of the workbook every all four days. So I grade those each day once they finish their reasoning, they bring it to me. Um, when I have a chance, then I grade it and I return it to them before the next day. That way they can go over any incorrect answers um, before they get started the next day. So I count each problem as one point. Now, sometimes a problem has you doing two or three things to it. So I might add an extra points for that. Each step that they do, I usually give them a point. So reasoning usually has a lot of points. So let's say they had 97 um, problems they solved this week and they got 82. Um, correct. I would just put 82 out of 97 and then I could go ahead and multiply that. And let's say that's a 93%. And then I would just write that right there. And so they've got their score. And then, okay, we're going to flip the page because this is a two-page week. Okay, next is exposition. Exposition's a little bit trickier to grade. Um, I have only been giving them grades for their final papers. I have not been grading their Annie chart or um, outline, but you certainly could. You know, you're supposed to get uh, 30 items per column on your Annie chart, so that could be 90 points possible on week one of the cycle. Um, your outline has certain components in it, which is in your LTW books. So you could give a point for each one of those components if they wrote that into their outline. Um, and then when I go to grade the paper, I have a grading form. If you have not seen my LTW grading rubric, you need to click on this right now because it's amazing. It goes over every single piece that's supposed to be in the outline. It also goes over all the figures of speeches. It's broken down by um, essay number. It's actually formulated for the Challenge B class. You'll have to go over um, that's color coded for that class. But um, as long as you know which essay you're using. Um, and then I uh, uh, go, I grade the MLA com uh, components as well because being in high school, they should be typing all of their papers in the MLA format. So I have that on the grading rubric as well. So make sure you check out that video and you can um, get that grading rubric. Uh, I think it's 99 cents. Okay, so I'm going to go over, let's say this was a week. So for me, the um, invention week and the arrangement weeks, they get zero points. They're only getting points for the like 12 papers that they write throughout the year. And then when it comes to the outline week, I grade it according to the um, chart. Um, let's see, they're doing essay six right now. I think essay six has like 265 points possible. Uh, my girls are great writers. They know exactly what's expected because they have a copy of the grading rubric so they can go through and grade themselves to make sure they've included all components. So let's say they just got counted off for a little bit of grammatical errors and they got 260 out of 265 points. And so that's gonna probably be like a 99% for their exposition paper, okay? Um, then flip over here, we've got debate. Um, debate can be a little bit more tricky to grade. So that might be week by week. Let's see, for week 12 in challenge one, um, they were doing, um, they're researching their uh, history. So they're giving their history presentation. So she's gonna get a score on that. Um, and I'm probably going to ask her teacher how she did in class. Of course, she's going to present it to me at home beforehand. So I'm going to grade it based upon her home presentation. Um, then I'll ask her teacher how she did in class. I'm going to say she did really good um, on her presentation, but I wish she had put in more historical facts or something like that. Um, I'm just going to give a letter grade for that, just a B plus instead of a percentage per se. Um, and then they have their policy debate. I'm going to ask the teacher for any evaluations on her policy debate. I'm probably just going to give a letter grade on that as well, because this is a more, um, uh, what's it called, where you just kind of, it's not based upon actual points like that I'm counting up. It's subjective. That's the word. This is a more subjective grade. I'm kind of evaluating based upon my opinion and her teacher's opinion. So I'm gonna say um, she's one of the best debaters in her class. So I'm gonna say that her teacher and I agree she got an A minus on her debate that they did, okay? So that would be how I would grade um, the in-class debate and the um, 
participation there. Okay, and then that is all six strands for the week. So this is how I keep track during the year. This keeps it very simple for me. It, it just meshes with my normal check-in accountability time to make sure they've done all the work in their strands. Again, this is for challenge one. And then at the end of the year, what I will do is I will set down and I'll go through strand by strand and I'll add up all the different grades throughout the year and come up with a cumulative grade, which is going to go into the transcript. And I like to use class conversations um i think it's called homeschool academy they have their own transcript service and it makes it very easy to select the classes um and i am going to put together a video i don't have it done yet but as soon as i get that done i'm going to link my video here on how i put together a high school transcript because it was super intimidating when i first looked at the website um but once i started digging into it and plugging in information it was actually very simple so i will walk you through that and you can um, see and i just sat down over the summer, one afternoon, and I just spend about two or three hours, maybe just run to a coffee shop, make it a fun thing. Um, all I need is their guide and a calculator and my computer. And um, I'll just whip that out in one afternoon. So just know the transcript does not have to be that intimidating. Um, know that teachers in public school are being subjective with their grading, that they could have two different teachers for the same class and come out with two different grades. Um, math is probably the only class that is really um, uh, work-based, figure-based. Everything else is subjective. So take a little bit of pressure off yourself. Um, know that... Um, your student is getting exactly what they need and that uh, you grade them accurately. And I like to ask them to self-evaluate as well. How do you feel like you did? Or another question I'll ask them, uh, especially in science, is out of all the information you are supposed to learn in this chapter, what percentage of that information do you think you actually learned? Because that's what percentage grades are, is what percentage did you master? Um, so it's a question they can self-evaluate. My students will come back to me like, I feel like I only learned about 50% of the information in this science chapter. And that gives me a good kind of starting point to see um, what we need to do and to be successful. All right. I hope you all are having a blessed semester. Um, good luck with all your record keeping. And um, if you would just put a hearts emoji in the comments, if you made it to the end of this video, but also put any other tips that you have for how you record keep, um, because we all have different personalities and it's great to come up with other ideas and find something that works really well for the homeschooling system that you've already created in your house. I hope you all have a blessed week. Bye.